golfers, there are three downswing forces created by golfer ground interaction that are said to increase club speed. They are the linear, rotary and vertical forces. According to some biomechanists, for most golfers, the linear force peaks before the lead arm is horizontal. The rotary force peaks between the time when the lead arm is horizontal and the shaft is horizontal and the vertical peak is seen between shaft horizontal and impact. Of course, there is, this is all based on measurements of relatively skilled golfers like Justin Thomas pictured here. Linear force results in what we refer to as weight shift, which takes place before rotation and rotation is followed by the vertical lift of the lead, shoulder and torso, which happens just before impact. So how can golfers maximize force application into the ground for greater club speed? Do they need to? There is a lot of talk these days about increasing the magnitude of these forces by pushing into the ground in different directions depending on the force a golfer is supposed to increase. For instance, to move towards target, golfers are told to push away from it through the trail foot. To rotate, golfers are told to push backwards to the trail foot and forwards through the lead foot. To get more lead side verticals, golfers are told to push down through the lead foot. Adding intentional force is a problematic concept because any intentional thought during the one-third second of the downswing will interfere with the body's motor plan for the movement and might make other body movements more variable to compensate for that. Additionally, there is a time lag between thought and action as it takes the message a few milliseconds to pass from the brain through the nerves to the muscles involved. And then there is a further small time lag because of electromechanical delay. And having a collection of pushing thoughts would exacerbate the issue. Finally, before planning on increasing any of the three forces, it is important to understand what each of the three resulting body movements can and should achieve. Let's begin with weight shift. Weight shift, in my opinion, simply happens. It is controlled by the central nervous system as the brain tries to provide dynamic balance for the rapidly descending upper body to land on so that the club can be delivered to the ball. If weight shift were not to take place and the golfer were to hang back instead, the descending arms would fall back and make it difficult for the club to be delivered to the ball without some extra compensatory movement. All golfers learn to shift weight without even trying. Is there any benefit to intentionally increasing linear forces by shifting some pressure onto the trail foot and then pushing the trail foot away from target? What would be the disadvantage? Some experts have said that weight shift can give the downswing some starting momentum. The weight shift phase also allows a golfer some time to get the two hips level so the pelvis can start to rotate on a horizontal plane. To my mind, weight shift does have its place in the downswing, but mainly it must not overwhelm the golfer's ability to rotate the torso efficiently for maximal club speed. A sign that weight shift has gone wrong is when at the end of that phase, the trail shoulder is internally rotated and or the hands are too far forward of the golfer's trail shoulder. This position prevents the trail elbow from being able to drop into the slot and thus be able to straighten in the sagittal plane of its design. From a shoulder internally rotated and hands too far forward position, a big rotary motion is required to prevent the club from arriving at the ball over the top. The only muscle strong enough to rapidly rotate the pelvis open and try to prevent over the top is the powerful gluteus maximus muscle. But one cannot just will the glute max and other external rotator muscles of the trail hip to fire. There should be enough pressure under the trail foot 
for the trail side muscles to gain purchase and contract off off where should the pressure through the feet be for the glute max muscle to make a forceful enough pelvic rotation fairly back through the trail foot how do we know this by trying the simple drill of sitting with maximal pressure through the trail butt cheek and feeling that towards target rotation happens only through the trail glute max conversely when pressure is center right or center trail side both the glute max and external oblique of the trail side can fire on the subjects of most golfers having their trail shoulder internally rotated or the trail hands too far forward of the trail shoulder at the end of the weight shift phase it requires a special set of circumstances to prevent that and it is not possible in any swing in which the trail side of the torso is higher than the lead side at the top of the back swing that is why most golfers simply continue on that path and hit the ball over the top because skilled golfers are really quick despite getting pressure way forward very early in the downswing they fall back very quickly in order to powerfully fire the glute max and open the hips in order to reduce the chance for an over the top motion but using the glute max and the other external rotator muscles is problematic as it requires pressure to be too far back and may cause slices and hooks if it doesn't come forward in time excessive horizontal torso rotation is also bad for the low back moreover research has shown that all that is needed of the glute max and the trail side external oblique abdominal muscles is a small pulse of energy just prior to impact this requires pressure to be just slightly back of center not too far back and finally what about the application of vertical force and the resultant vertical torso lift the vertical motion in terms of muscle firing is not so much a lift of the lead side as a drop of the trail side because there are no muscles that lift or extend the torso sideways but many that drop it down or laterally flex it moreover when golfers have succeeded in making a strong rotary mo motion by firing the glute max the lead shoulder is not as high as it could be if the shoulders had remained square or slightly closed at impact so golfers rather than push here or push there it is much easier to simply position slightly more body mass on the side where specific muscles are best able to fire off off and not have to worry about intentional downswing muscle contractions to push into the ground ideally at the start of the downswing pressure should fall slightly to the trail side of center so that there is the slight pulse before impact of the glute max and the external oblique that dr stuart mcgill talks of it should be followed by a slight pulse of the internal oblique of the lead side torso and finally of the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus of the lead hip at the very end of the motion look at the pressure patterns of this golfer which are quickly followed by the contraction of desired muscles the ideal swing is one that allows pressure to fall back of center at the start of the downswing and then uses the trail side muscles so that as pressure shifts forward all possible hip and abdominal rotators are used in the correct sequence and to maximum benefit in my next post i will discuss a new movement that golfers are being told to use which i refer to as the grfm movement